Judge Fatih, Your Excellency Samia Suluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency President Fuo Nyasingwe, President of the Republic of Togo, Your Excellency Chuna Kastori, Prime Minister of Norway, my brother, Dr. Akiwumi Adesina, President of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Fatih Biro, Executive Director of the International Energy Agency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be here this morning to participate in this very historic first ever global summit on clean cooking in Africa. I am particularly heartened that my dear sister, President Samia Hassan, is co-chairing this summit along three distinguished individuals, the Prime Minister of Norway, Dr. Adishine, and Dr. Biro, whose leadership and commitment to this cause are truly, truly commendable. Thank you for your commitment. I wish to commend the International Energy Agency and the African Development Bank Group for convening the summit. The urgency of our task is underscored by the IEA's analysis, which reveals that nearly one in five Africans still cook their meals over open fires and traditional stoves. Shockingly, 900 million Africans lack access to clean cooking fuels, a number that is projected to increase by 2030 if we do not act swiftly and decisively. Regrettably, our past experience have revealed a disheartening truth. Clean cooking, a matter of utmost importance, is often overlooked in our energy access and electrification planning process in our various countries. Today's summit is a call to action, a plea to prioritize this crucial matter for the betterment of our people and our planet. This summit calls on all of us to act big and boldly if we are to achieve Sustainable Development Goal 7. We cannot achieve our global net zero target without a robust effort to address access to clean cooking solutions in Africa and South Asia in particular. Therefore, we must be bold enough to implement the right policies, create the enabling environment to ensure that close to, close to the one billion people currently lacking access to clean cooking in Africa and elsewhere can transition to cleaner fuels and technologies. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in the context of Sierra the 2023 SDG tracking report shows that Sierra Leone's access to clean fuel and technologies for cooking was at 0 0.8% in 2021, with 1.5% 1 of the population in urban areas having access and 0% in rural areas with access. The absence of access to clean cooking solutions significantly affects Sierra Leone's economy 
with an estimated annual cost of inaction totaling $4.7 billion. These costs stem from adverse impacts on various fronts. Women's lost productivity, $1.4 billion. Health, $3.2 billion. And climate change impact, $0.2 billion. So, ladies and gentlemen, this summit on clean cooking in Africa to make 2024 a turning point for clean cooking is critical for Sierra Leone, and that is why I am here. My government recognizes the importance of access to clean cooking and is committed to taking bold steps because it is the right thing to do for our people. We have mainstream cooking, clean cooking, in our energy planning processes. And I am pleased to inform this August body that, in, that the, a third, that in the third quarter of this year, we will finalize the following key policy instruments and initiatives to address clean cooking issues. With the support of the Sustainable Energy for All, we will complete a just and inclusive energy transition plan or green growth plan, which includes access to clean cooking as a major pillar. With the support of the World Bank, a clean cooking strategy and action plan will be completed by June. With the support of the Clean Cooking Alliance, we are establishing the Clean Cooking Delivery Unit embedded within the Presidential Initiative on Climate Change, Renewable Energy, and Food Security. We are establishing a Climate Finance Energy Innovation Hub, which OPEC fund, with OPEC Fund for International Development. Furthermore, with the support of the University of Loughborough and the Modern Energy Cooking Services, we will commence a techno-economic study and, and readiness assessment for electric cooking in urban areas, similar to work done in Uganda, Kenya, and Mozambique. As a country, susceptible to the harsh realities of climate change, we are committed to building climate resilience and gradually transitioning to green growth. Notably, we are working on strategic policy instruments, including a National Climate Change Act and a set of regulations for climate finance to support our forests, provide an enabling environment for investment in climate resilience and alternative livelihoods and create a transparent and credible carbon trading system that will leverage our abundant green assets. Ladies and gentlemen, I acknowledge the commitment and leadership of my fellow African leaders. Several nations across the continent are taking bold steps towards clean cooking, setting ambitious targets, and working with Clean Cooking Alliance to establish delivery units and enable more carbon finance and private sector investment in the sector. We recognize that each country's transition journey is different and must be respected. Progress has been made and more is possible with our collective efforts. It requires strong commitment and action, political will, and adequate resources. The IEA estimates that we need about $4 billion a year to solve our challenges and ensure universal clean cooking access by 2030. Today, we have a unique opportunity to change the trajectory of clean cooking for all, 
especially for our women who have been the most disenfranchised. You are here because you want to make a difference. Let us join hands together and make a difference. Change lives and protect our environment. Let us make 2024 a turning point for clean cooking in Africa. Thank you.